I don't know if anybody else relates to this, but I feel like the castle kit changed me. Before that pack came out, I don't think I ever cared about building castles in The Sims, but then we got the pack and all the items to do it, and all of a sudden I'm building castles all the time. So long story short, I built another castle in The Sims 4. This one actually has kind of a funny backstory because I made this during my charity fundraiser back in May. Every year in May, I do a huge fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We actually ended up raising about $610,000 on just my channel. And during the course of the fundraiser, anybody who donated $10 had the chance to suggest a build for me to do. So by the end of the month, I had this massive spreadsheet with a ton of different build ideas. And then on stream, I pulled that spreadsheet up and used a random number generator to pick a build to do. So out of all of the thousands, we spun a random build and the winner suggested that we make a Barbie inspired castle, specifically inspired by some of the Barbie movies. So think like Barbie and the Diamond Castle, The Princess and the Pauper, like those sorts of movies. Just to give you a couple of examples, things like this castle, stuff like this one, which are both very different and really hard to achieve in The Sims, but I loved the idea, so I was totally down to try. And I decided to build it in Tartosa because I don't know if I've ever built a castle in this world. And believe it or not, it's a small lot, but this lot is perfect for this, I'll show you why. This lot is up on this beautiful cliffside and behind it are all of these mountains. Like honestly, this I think is one of the prettiest lots in the entirety of The Sims 4. So even though it's small, I feel like I had to do it here. So that's the plan. And now I wanna dive in and show you what I built. You know, I think that this castle looks a lot bigger from the outside than it actually is. I use tall wall height everywhere and it's like three stories tall. So it's very wide and it's very big looking, but from the inside, it actually doesn't have that many rooms. The downstairs is all of the main living space. So we've got like a kitchen, a living room, there's a big formal dining room and stuff like that. Upstairs, there's just the one bedroom. I could have had two bedrooms, but I decided instead to give Barbie a fancy dressing room closet. Cause if we're making a Barbie inspired castle, like she has to have a fancy closet, right? But you'll see that more once we actually get onto the inside. I just want to warn you so that you're appropriately prepared for the house not actually being that big. It has a relatively small yard as well. It kind of has like a tiny courtyard in the back, which I'm not mad about because I was kind of trying to pretend that this lot had more courtyard just around. In my mind, the whole clearing up here belongs to the castle, even if it's not technically a part of the lot and it's not actually editable. Now, as far as the shape goes, I wasn't trying to make this inspired by any particular Barbie movie castle. I was kind of just inspired by them as a whole. <laughs> and then we tried to like mix and match some different parts that we like from different castles. That's the thing, it's just really hard to try and copy an animated movie's castle into The Sims. I mean, you saw the diamond castle, that thing would be like 10 stories tall, at least in The Sims, and it's so pointy, and you just can't do that in the game. The game works on a grid, we only have so many stories we're allowed to build on, so it's just really hard to recreate those things and have them be appropriately to scale, and like the colors can't be right. So I, I kind of just took the inspiration and then winged it as far as the actual layout went. I'm not exactly an expert in castle architecture, either. So I was kind of just like putting random bump outs and random towers everywhere. I just kept looking at it from the front and thinking, okay, do we need another tower? Yes. Let me add one. <laughs> so this probably isn't the most realistic thing in the world. I don't really care about that. I just wanted it to be pretty. So forgive me if it's like strange and, and too pointy or whatever. I thought it looked cool. But you can kind of see now how it's a little bit small inside of the house. And then you try and add in things like stairs that take up so much room. The whole place is very skinny. It's like wide wide, but very skinny. So there's not a lot of room to lay out the place. And I, I learned that lesson the hard way when I started trying to furnish it. I really like the shape though. I think it's pretty balanced with the different heights of the different rooms. I'm kind of liking how it's turning out. Oh, hi, Snap. Thank you so much. I didn't realize she was on the tree. <laughs> um, anyway, with the color scheme though. Oh yeah, you don't like it? I was gonna say that too. I don't love the color of the roof. <laughs> we went back and forth. She hates it. Oh my gosh, she's speaking her mind. We went back and forth a lot on the colors to use on the exterior because we knew we were going for Barbie castle. I didn't want like gaudy Barbie castle, you know? I didn't want to use like these horrible vibrant colors. I really wanted to have a pink roof. There's only a couple of options. There's this one that's kind of like a purpley tone and then there's the pink metal roof and I, metal roof is not gonna go on this building. So anyway, the idea at first was to have white walls and then this kind of purpley colored roof. And then we were looking at some of the pink stone walls because there is one, there is one stone that kind of has a pinkish tone to 
into it. So I was kind of trying that and it's just, I don't know. I, I didn't like how any of them were looking. This is kind of a tip maybe for you if you're struggling with stuff like that too, because oftentimes I'm looking and I'm like, I just don't know if I like how this is turning out. So I just leave the wallpaper there and kind of like let it soak in. Cause sometimes you just gotta come back to it with fresh eyes. I was staring at it and I was like, I just, I just don't know. So I was like, okay, stop for a second, work on literally anything else and then return. So you'll see me kind of jump around a little bit. We haven't quite gotten to that point yet. Right now what I'm doing is picking out freezes and stuff. I decided to use the vampires freeze instead. Originally I wanted to use the castle one because it's the castle pack, it's the whole castle build, but the vampire one's a little bit fancier. So I tried to mix and match that in. And then with the windows, oh my goodness, did I struggle with the windows. I had an easy time putting big windows, but the small ones on the towers were very hard for me to place because I knew I wanted them to be kind of like spiraling up the wall, but I just, I don't know. I was really struggling with where they should go and how many there should be, especially because you can't put them in between the floors. So they would be like cut off or, or clipping if they did that. So you're kind of stuck with placement. Is it just me that has like the hardest time ever putting windows on these turrets? Because I do this sometimes even on like a, a more regular house, like a, I don't know, like a Victorian house that has a big tower. I, I really always have a hard time with windows on them. I never know how many to put. I feel like it always looks like too much when I do it. And so I, I struggle every single time. It usually ends up working out, but it's always a battle of me being like, I don't know what to do <laughs> and trying out like five different options. I am an overthinker and we all know this. I always have been, I always will be, nobody's surprised. <laughs> but yeah, I was majorly overthinking windows on this house. I actually live streamed this over on my Twitch channel first. So if you wanna watch back the full thing, I can link it down below. I always post all of my streams on my second channel called More Simsy after I'm done streaming them. So if you want to watch that, I can link the channel for you and stuff. And then you can go back and see the full process. Although I don't know if you want to go back and see the full process because it was kind of pitiful in the beginning with the back and forth that I was doing. But if you want to watch it live, I do stream on Twitch like every single day. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll link my Twitch channel down below too. While I'm sitting here trying to figure out the wallpaper though, I, this might be a good time for a couple of life updates because I tend to use these speed builds like a little podcast. It's a good time to talk and I can just tell you what's been going on. Um, a lot's been going on. I've had a pretty rough week. I'm not gonna lie. I laugh about it, but it's actually not funny. Last week I went to Chicago to visit my grandma and thank God we were there when we were because we ended up having to call an ambulance for her in the middle of the night. She got really sick on the last day that we were there and it was really scary. She was in the hospital for a few days. She just got discharged from the hospital now. So I had to like extend my trip and stay there longer. And when I got back, I was kind of traumatized. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so I've been having kind of a hard time um, like recording, I guess. It's just, it's been a really weird week. Um, I'm not feeling the best. <laughs> Mentally, I am not really at 100% right now. I'm, I'm doing my best, I'm doing what I can, but if you see me like miss some uploads, perhaps, bear with me. <laughs> I've really been going through it. She's definitely doing a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it was just really scary. So I think anybody can relate to that. I don't want to even get into details, but it was pretty bad and it was pretty scary. So um, anyway, that's what I've been up to. I'm home now. Um, we got back on Wednesday and my cat's birthday was this week, which is pretty fun. We had some silly things to celebrate. I like bought her a fake car. <laughs> I got this like cat scratcher that is a car because she turned 16. So I was like, haha, I'll give her a car for her 16 birthday. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Um, I think she was excited about it. I mean, she doesn't know it's her birthday, obviously, but I do. And I was excited about it. And she likes scratchy things. So, uh, you know, she liked it. Oh, also, <laughs> this is embarrassing. I got to stop reading scary books because I, I don't normally read any sort of like thriller books, e even like mystery books. Anything like that is not for me. Like I have bad anxiety and I tend to like, I take on things too much from like the media that I consume. <laughs> well, I read, this is like kind of embarrassing cause it's not that bad, but I read this book series called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And everybody loves this book series. Everybody's obsessed with this book series. I read it this week, probably a bad time to read it because oh my God, it's not, I don't know, it, you might like it, but the main character, she gets herself into some kind of precarious positions, even in the first book, because she's trying to solve a murder 
And like, just to give you an example, it's not a spoiler. She breaks into the dead girl's house to try and find evidence because she's like taken it upon herself to solve it herself. And she goes to the degree of breaking into someone's house to, to find, oh my God. Anyway, so it's stuff like that that was stressing me out because I was like really anxious about the poor choices I felt like she was making. But I'm not kidding. This whole week, my heart's been like pounding as I'm trying to read these books. I got, I shouldn't read them. I, I finished the series, but I shouldn't read books like this anymore. I need to know myself better than that. I can't be doing that. I need to read like fluffy books, especially like literally, this is so embarrassing, but I'll tell you anyway. Oh my God. So the other night when we had to call the ambulance for her, I couldn't sleep because I was so anxious about what was going on because she was sick before she went to bed. So we were like all kind of stressed. Like, should we call an ambulance now? But she didn't want us to. So, oh my God. I was like reading my little scary book, all anxious and stressed. And then everything went down and we had to call the ambulance and I was reading this murder book. I was, listen, it's not for me. I can't read books like that. I just, I need to stop. I need to stop. So I've learned my lesson. There were parts that I enjoyed, but the way that it made me feel is unhealthy, I think. <laughs> this is why I can't watch movies like that either. I'm so bad for that. I'll, I give the example sometimes of like, this is this is another embarrassing one, but I watched this Disney Channel original film called Go Figure about like ice skating. And there's one point in the movie where the girl gets locked in a closet and then she misses practice and gets in huge trouble and they like don't believe her or care that it wasn't her fault. And that was so distressing to me, like heart pounding, genuinely distressed over this children's movie, Disney Channel original film. Everything is a happy ending. It's a Disney movie, like nothing bad, nothing actually bad or high stakes happens. But that's the kind of reaction that I have to stuff like this, to, to like simple things. So you can imagine that a, um, you know, high stakes murder book is not for me. I don't know why I react like this to stuff. I wish that I didn't, but I genuinely get so stressed. I just, I take it on too much. That's my problem. I just like, I don't know. I, it feels like it's me. So I, <laughs> I really, really overreact. Anyway, that's enough of my life updates for today. <laughs> if this is your first video of mine, you're probably like, Ooh, this girl, I don't know about her. Why is she talking about all that in a Sims video? Oh, and at one point my game almost crashed. It didn't crash. Thankfully I had to like reload and then it was fine. But of course that happened. We're working on landscaping now. You can see what I mean by the small courtyard that I added into the backyard. It's time it's just enclosed by some fences. I did try out a couple different kinds of fences. I was looking at the romantic garden stuff one because it had some pretty leaves on it. I kind of liked the idea of this place having very lush landscaping, but I didn't want it to look overgrown. And there was something about the fence with the leaves on top next to the bush that it just looked weird. So I went back to plain white. Most of the plants are very pink. You'll see that I go through and I put pink stuff pretty much everywhere with the plants. The roof is kind of like a pinky purple color. You can tell that we settled on just a plain stone and the pinky purple colored roof. So I tried to channel that with the flowers. I was using a lot of pinky purple colored flowers from romantic garden stuff. This build has a lot of romantic garden stuff between the flowers and the different decor and the fences. We even have like statues and stuff from it that I added. And I think the plants kind of saved us. I will say that there's not that much pink because the place is three stories tall. And then we have just pink on the roof and pink on the floor, but I don't think it's bad. I, I think it's elegant and that's okay. I just didn't love how the pink stone looked. And I, I did try, but we kind of put it up to a vote in the chat because I was live streaming this and they, they didn't like it that much either. So we settled for plain instead. I'm sorry if you don't like it. And speaking of all of these Barbie movies, I'd actually be really curious to know what your favorite of all of those Barbie animated movies are. I don't know how many of you have seen them. I assume a lot of you have. I don't think that I've seen that many of them. If I had to pick one, I think I'd pick Barbie and the Nutcracker. That's just the one that I remember the most. I think because my neighbor had like a physical physical copy of it. They might have even had it on VHS, which is kind of funny to look back on, but my neighbor had it. So we used to watch it a lot when we were kids. I might be like aging myself right now. I'm not even old, but <laughs> I might be aging myself right now because I know a lot of you are a lot younger than me, <laughs> but that was, that was probably my favorite back in the day. I'm 24. I was born in 1999 and that movie came out in 2001, but you'll have to tell me in the comments which one you like best. You know what's so funny though? At this point, we're so far into the build and we have not started the interior at all. <laughs> it took me way longer to figure out the outside, which makes sense because it's kind of a complicated exterior. So I guess it's understandable that it would take so long to do, but it is funny in like the scheme of the video. <laughs> We're about 13 minutes into the sped up footage and it's 21 minutes long. So we spent way more time on the outside.
outside. At this point though, we're just about finished with the exterior and about to start moving on into the inside. I was doing a couple little last minute things like getting some trash cans, I found some benches, uh, a couple little picnic tables and things like that to put outside. I wanted to have a fully functional back patio. I wasn't really sure about what furnishing style I was going for, because obviously this is meant to be a castle, but I didn't really want it to be like an old timey castle. I wasn't trying to do some sort of historically accurate period piece or anything like that. I, I just wanted to have a, a pretty castle, I guess. <laughs> so I used things like a hot tub. And so I, I guess maybe it, it used to be an old castle and now it's been updated. So it's not like a modern build on the inside, but it does have, you know, modern plumbing. It's got electronics. So it has a TV, you know, stuff like that. Oh, and actually, I lied. I was gonna use a hot tub, but I changed my mind and put a swing set instead. <laughs> I did consider the hot tub, but I feel like it was too much. The hot tub was a little bit too fancy, too weird. The roof didn't match, you know. The swing set is pretty though, and so I liked that one. And then for the rest of the interior, we have a couple of really weird shaped rooms. You can see I have the floor plan kind of figured out in here. The first thing that I did was work on the first tiny bathroom. Emphasis on tiny, it is a really small little bathroom in that tower. I used the towers mostly for bathroom stuff because it's so hard to fit anything else in there. This one was just a small toilet and a sink, that's all. This is kind of like the guest bathroom in my mind for everybody else to access. And then also downstairs, when you come in through the front door, there's like a lobby almost. It's a very fancy, very formal entryway. And then it takes you forward some more into like a music room. To the right, we have a big living room. And then to the left, we have the dining room and the kitchen. The kitchen is really, really small, like kind of abnormally small for a house this big and this fancy. But I also had in my mind that it was an old house. So I figured realistically, it probably was tiny when it was built. And honestly, a house like this might even have a kitchen like in the basement instead, but you don't want that. You wouldn't want that for your Sims. <laughs> I wasn't trying to have like servants quarters or things like that. I wanted it to be more practical for gameplay. But there's so many questions when you're building a thing like this, because do you want it to be accurate and have servants quarters and like silly things like that in the basement? Or do you want it to be a normal house that your Sim can actually play in that's functional and effective for gameplay? So you're always trying to balance the, the realism and the gameplay aspect. Same with the inspo picks from earlier. We have to balance what works in The Sims with like, what does the build look like that we're trying to be inspired by? You're probably also noticing that I used a ton of packs in this build. Just in this kitchen alone, we've got vampire's cabinets, growing together appliances, castle kit for the windows. We have the home chef hustle kit for some extra appliances. <laughs> There's even more kits with like plant decor and stuff. A few of these things, like the flooring in the whole house is actually base game. It's just base game wood floor. You'll see like a checkered tile that I did. That's a base game marble floor, but I made a custom checker where I put like individually placing all the tiles to make it look like a checkerboard. The wallpaper you're seeing everywhere is from the Modern Lux kit, as are the curtains. Yeah, long story short, there's a lot of different packs in this build and it's definitely not a budget build either. <laughs> I don't even know how much it costs. It might be kind of fun to guess. I, I, I'm thinking about the house. I know I use some really expensive stuff upstairs. Like I think I have a bed that's worth like 15K upstairs. So it's just one bedroom, but it has some pricey items. I think I'd say that this house is probably around 150,000 simoleons. That's my final guess. I'd be curious to know what you think. Don't cheat, don't check, but tell me in the comments right now what your guess is. And then we'll find out at the end of the video together how much it costs, but it's definitely pricey. <laughs> the first room I really did was the formal dining room. We've got some nice pink chairs. Chairs. The whole house is very white and pink. That's kind of like the main inspiration. It's just a lot of white with pink accents. It's kind of like a tasteful Barbie pink. I, I didn't want to use like a hot pink. <laughs> that I felt like was not going to work with the house. This is a little bit more subtle. This next room next to the dining room is going to be the office. So we have some really fancy bookshelves. We've got a fancy desk in there. Those bookshelves are from the new Crystal Creation stuff pack. So if you're seeing them and you're like, oh my God, what are those? I know it has a ladder. It's pretty cool. That's the Crystal pack. The Crystal pack has some pretty interesting stuff. I used quite a bit of it here in this room, like the desk included. We've got a nice computer. I think I put a chess table in here. And then in the tower, I tried to make it into like a reading nook almost. So I stuffed some chairs back there in the corner. It is definitely a nook. <laughs> it's very tight back there. It's also very dark back there because there's barely any windows. And if there are, they're like really high up on the wall and those little tiny skinny ones. So it wouldn't really be my first choice as a reading nook. Like I probably would pick that last as a place to read in this house. I'd like to be in one of the brighter rooms next to a window, I think. <laughs> but it is pretty. I do like it. These rooms were kind of easy for me. I felt like these all kind of came together nicely. It wasn't so hard for me to figure out.
out, I had a significantly harder time with the middle of the house. So that entryway and then the hallway behind the entryway, I really, really struggled in there with what to do. I was trying to have like a music room, so you might have seen me put a piano there a second ago. I liked the idea of that, but the actual placement of it, I went back and forth so much. I put the piano by the front door, I scooted it backwards. I mean, I did not know what I wanted this to be like. I ended up settling on this room being the piano room. It's kind of weird because it's like an extension of the hallway. It's like the whole middle part of the house is just hallway walking space. And this room's quite tight because it's got archways and doors on all sides and there's no windows in here. So it's kind of weird and dark and like weirdly central to the home. But I still wanted to have some nice accents. So I tried the Wedding Stories piano, which I do love. It's very fancy and very pretty. And we managed to get a couple other cool things in here too. There's like chairs, we've got a fancy violin. Oh, I think I used the 15,000 simoleon violin and I'm certain that I have a couple of the knight statues. Okay, this house might be more expensive than I realized. I forgot about the knight statues. Those are like 8,000 simoleons each. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, this might be a little bit pricey. <laughs> so at this point, I skipped ahead a little bit. We've furnished the living room now. I went ahead and made one of the turrets into like a little art studio and then I turned the other one into like a dog corner. <laughs> I put a big dog bed in the corner of one of them. I don't know if it's weird. I thought it was cool. Upstairs at this point, we've got two bedrooms. I end up swapping it, like I said earlier, to become a bedroom and a dressing room. So it's kind of a weird upstairs. We've got an extra bathroom upstairs. There's like a big open hallway sitting room. And then we also have this formal bedroom and then a detached dressing room. So you can't get into the closet from the bedroom, but you do have access to it from upstairs. I guess the whole of the upstairs is kind of meant to be private space for just Barbie. We don't have any guests going up there, so it's fine. <laughs> in her bedroom, she has things like a fancy ensuite. She's got a vanity table. She's got little perfumes and, and clutter and decor and flowers and all those things. The turret in here becomes an ensuite bathroom as well. And that's pretty much the whole interior of the house. I did end up cutting a couple things towards the end because it was getting kind of long. And I figured you don't need to see me go back and forth on this. The bedroom situation, I changed my mind about 15 times. <laughs> so what I'll do now is load back into the game and I'll show you a tour because that way you can see the finished version and not have to see my indecisiveness. So we built this on that 30 by 20 lot in Tartosa. Final guess for the castle, I think is 160,000 simoleons. I changed it into, oh, <laughs> Okay, it costs 225,000. I was way off. I was way off. Okay, well, this is the final build. It's Barbie's dream castle. It uses every single pack, pretty much. <laughs> Embarrassing. And it costs 225,492 simoleons. So I certainly guessed wrong. It's only one bedroom and it costs that much money. My God. Okay, well, this is what it looks like from the outside when you first load into the lot. There's a couple things I really like about the exterior. I think in particular, I love this frieze at the top. I think that all of the towers look beautiful on here. I think the color scheme is pretty. I'm really excited about the exterior just generally. You'll see a lot of pretty gardens that I went through and placed around the outside. I think my terrain paint is gone, which is bad. <laughs> this is the little back patio. I was obsessed with this. I think this is so pretty with the pretty pink tree back there as well. And we have a little fountain, we have a grill, there's a table and a swing set, so it's nice and functional. There is also a wishing well back here. And then when you come inside of the house, the top floor is just empty. I didn't put anything in this because it was so small and so dark. When you come into the front of the house, oh, I changed this more than I thought. Oh my God, I've totally fumbled this voiceover. When you first walk in, it's a fancy music room entryway hallway. And this is cool because it's two stories. I was definitely upsetting some people who play the piano because realistically you'd want it to be this way. That's like, better for the music or whatever, but it's The Sims and this fits better. So <laughs> I put it like that. We have like a little reading nook and, and a chess table back here. There's a very fancy statue in this corner and just like a sitting area when you first walk in. The staircase is in this hallway as well. When you come further forward, this originally was gonna be a music room. Again, changed back and forth a lot. I swapped it out for a card table so you can play games in there. We also have a globe bar so you can get drinks. This is that little tiny hall bathroom that we had. To the left, we have a big formal dining room for both humans humans and for pets. We have the pet bowls and there's a very tiny kitchen off of that formal dining room right here. And then they have a very fancy formal office as well. There's a second chess table. There's a huge computer, reading nook, all that sort of stuff. When you come way back this way, this is the living room that I didn't really include in the speed build. It's not very big, but we've got a nice big fireplace TV, sort of a sitting area. We've got an organ, which is way too fancy. There is a very small little art studio because in my mind, Barbie is a woman of many talents. 
So she's got a lot of hobbies here. <laughs> she has her art studio. The dog has their own little bedroom. I closed off this tower because it was behind the kitchen and it didn't really fit with the cabinetry. And I think that's fine because there's enough space, you know? There's probably some creepy secrets hidden in there if you're being honest. <laughs> and then you come upstairs, there's just an extra sitting area up here. You've got another globe bar. This tower kind of became like a secret cat room, <laughs> which I kind of liked. This weird long skinny room becomes a huge bathroom for us. It's got some fancy stuff back here as well. And then we have the only bedroom right here. It's got a vanity. It has a huge bed. Again, 15,000 simoleons this bed is worth. It's from Get Famous. <laughs> They've got a small ensuite bathroom right here as well for Barbie. Really strange window placement. I, I know. It looks okay from the outside. It looks absolutely bizarre from the inside. <laughs> and that's fine. It happens. Barbie also has her own private dressing room right here, which I was kind of obsessed with. This is my favorite part of the house. We have these really huge closet like built-ins basically that come from Get Famous. I kind of forgot about these, but it's got fancy clothing. It's got fancy shoes. They come in pink. I put a purse and some crystals for her. She has like an ottoman in the middle. I even put jewelry on this little display case. I felt like this was really cool and I don't ever do this. It's rare that I have walk-in closets or closets at all for my Sims. So I thought it was a fun addition for Barbie in particular. And that, my friends, is the fully finished build. It is a big one. There's a lot going on. <laughs> it's very chaotic. It's a huge castle, but I had a lot of fun building it. Hopefully you liked this one too. I don't know if I'm that good at building castles, but I have fun doing them. So hopefully that kind of balances out. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, I'll link my Twitch channel and my second channel, More Simsy, down below in case you want to check them out. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed here to me on YouTube, and I will end the video right here and catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. Wow, whenever I do these speed builds, I know I just talk and talk and talk and talk, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just have so many things to say.